Hi, everybody. We're going to be talking about why SSRIs take so long to get built up into your system, why SSRIs take so long to be effective, and then at the very end, kind of why those SSRI medications will still give you side effect right away. Uh, we're going to go through a, a brief review of SSRIs, how they work, some of the serotonin receptors out there, and then we're going to actually talk about the theory, the somatodend somatodendritic theory about why medicines take, at least these medicines, take so long to be effective, uh, and then end with the side effects. Uh, it does get a little hairy. If you didn't watch my previous video last week on SSRIs and the basic function and mechanism of action, uh, I, I would watch that one because this one is going to be a little bit more, quite a bit more detailed, um, and, and then jump back over to this video. So first up, a uh, quick review on this slide here. Uh, these are just common SSRIs, uh, particularly the ones on the right-hand side, paroxetine, fluoxetine, citalopram, uh, sertraline, benlafaxine, all very common SSRIs. The left-hand side is the FDA-approved SSRIs. That one also has the addition of fluvoxamine and vil uh, vilazodone. Vil vilazodone. Um, again, I haven't used those two at all basic mechanism of action. This is what most people see or think of when they hear about SSRIs, how do SSRIs work? How do antidepressants work? The <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Ali. Is, is venlafaxine in there? Oh, I didn't even I didn't even notice that. Yep. Um SSRIs block um the reuptake proteins they the uh, serotonin transporters so this is the typical um the typical picture that people will see with the ssris the blue dots blocking the reuptake of the red serotonin there's more serotonin in that space to talk to the postsynaptic nerve um postsynaptic uh nerve then takes that signal and propagates uh, uh more talking somewhere else in the brain uh, same thing here. I like this. I like this diagram. Uh, the pink blob. The pink blob is the serotonin transporter. The cert on the left hand side. Serotonin is blue. It goes through and gets taken back up into the cell. On the right, an SSRI, SNRI, any antidepressant uh, in theory gets uh, uh, blocks that pink receptor. The uh, serotonin stays on the outside. The Serotonin then uh, reacts to those uh, serotonin receptors on the postsynaptic cell more, et cetera. This is a quick chart of all the different types of serotonin subtypes. So serotonin is labeled as 5-HT. So anytime you see 5-HT, that is serotonin. That's just the shorthand term for the molecular structure of uh of serotonin uh, that's on the left hand column the middle column is where all the serotonin is distributed uh, uh or, or where all those receptors are distributed and this is actually a fairly boiled down version of a fairly boiled down um uh chart of that and then on the far hand uh, far right column is the effects that each of those receptors seemingly have in those areas of the brain or somewhere else in the body. So the actual theory, how, uh, you know, how do the SSRIs, how do antidepressants really work? The theory is somatodendritic theory. Somatodendritic is referring to the body and dendrites, the left-hand side of this picture. Typically, when we talk about how do SSRIs work, we talk about the right-hand side of the nerve, the axonal terminal, the very end of the nerve, where the synapse is, and where all the uh, neurotransmitters are getting pushed out at those ends to talk to the next part of the brain. But the somatodendritic theory is really, we think that the SSRIs are working primarily on the serotonin transporters on the left-hand side of this screen. I have to give all the credit to Stahl's pharmacology on this. Um, 
psychopharmacology. The, I, I looked for a lot of different um, pictures or images trying to explain this um, theory, uh, maybe a little bit better, but really Stahl's book is, we use this a lot for a lot of our uh, mechanisms of action, uh, but this is the one that we use here and the only one that I could really find the adequately kind of try to explain this. So there's a few pictures in here that come straight from his book and I wanted to give him the credit. Uh, whenever you see pictures like this, this is where um, that a picture like this is coming from that book. This is what we think a, ne a regular nerve does. Serotonin in this picture it are the yellow rectangles. And typically on the right hand side of this nerve, the serotonin is getting pushed out in between the synapse, the presynapse and uh, uh, presynaptic nerve and the postsynaptic nerve. There's that space called the synapse. There's the serotonin sitting in the middle of it. But serotonin is also working on the hearing end of that nerve, the left hand side of this nerve. You can see the yellow rectangle sitting on the nerve on the left hand side uh, of the dendrite here. If you look really closely, it says 1A. That's actually referring uh, back here to the serotonin 1A receptor, uh, uh, one of the subtypes of a serotonin receptor. In this spot, that 1A receptor works as an autoregulator. It basically is a referee for the nerve. It helps the nerve regulate itself about how active it should or shouldn't be. When serotonin hits that 1A receptor, look at the bottom nerve now. When it hits that 1A receptor, the 1A receptor says, hey, okay, we got enough serotonin. We don't really need to propagate too much of a uh, signal down, down the axon to the other parts of the brain. So you notice the lightning bolt goes from two to one, there's less activity. And then at the very end of that axon on the bottom image is less serotonin molecules in between the presynaptic nerve and the postsynaptic nerve. That is a regular nerve. A depressed nerve has a whole lot of those serotonin 1A receptors. And if it has a whole lot of those serotonin 1A receptors, then it's going to really downregulate how much serotonin gets pumped out at the other end of the nerve. This is a pretty good schematic of where we think a lot of the serotonergic pathways are, or where we know a lot of the serotonergic pathways are. The bodies, primarily, the bodies of the nerves are primarily in the brainstem, particularly down by the uh, RAFA nuclei. The axons, you know, it's not just like, oh, from point A to point B here, just across the page. It's a pretty, it's a pretty long nerve. Those axonal uh, axons and the terminals are spread sporadically across the brain. And that's the red arrows that you see there. But the bodies of those nerves, primarily right there, center of your brain in the brainstem, the oldest part of our brain. Depressed brain, that's where all those upregulated serotonin 1A receptors are on the bodies of the nerve. Too much of the activity of those 1A receptors going on there, and the serotonin doesn't get pumped out to the rest of the brain the way that it needs to. Back to Stahl's book here, Stahl's image. They uh, This one actually um, draws that example out a little bit better for me. Top image. They've added a couple more, uh, couple more proteins. There's the blue star like looking proteins. Those are the serotonin transporters. That's like the pink glob, uh, receptor that I showed earlier, uh, in the slides. So there's those serotonin transporters, not only at the end of the nerve on the axonal end, but also at the dendritic end. Look at the bottom picture, bottom picture. There are the green balls 
Those are our SSRIs. Those are our serotonin reuptake inhibitors. It's not only just working at the axonal end on the right-hand side, it's also working on the dendritic side, the, the body side. And there's a lot more serotonin going on and a lot more serotonin 1A receptors going on in a depressed nerve, or at least that's what we think. So if there's a lot more noise going on, actually, I'll get to that point in a second. Just again, kind of showing, okay, most of the time SSRIs are working uh, where there's a heavy density of serotonin nerve bodies. It will work at the axonal end, but primarily at the nerve bodies in the brain stem. There's too much noise. There's too much serotonin going on at the uh, nerve bodies here in the brainstem. It's too loud. There's too much going on. What happens is the brain shuts it off. It takes a couple weeks. It takes two to, two to four weeks or so to really see this happen. But in this picture, close-up picture, there's a desensitization. There's so much serotonin hitting those 1A receptors, the brain literally says, okay, there's too much. It's like a five-year-old drumming away on his drum set. It's noisy. It's obnoxious. And you're like, well, you don't want your kid to not have any fun, but you don't need a drum set. So you take away most of the drum set. You just leave them one drum. The kid just needs one drum. That's what's going on here. In this picture, the 1A receptors far down-regulated or desensitized. So there's less 1A receptors to tell the nerve to calm down. So it goes back to more of a normal activity level. Now we got two lightning bolts in this nerve again. We got the green SSRI uh, medications blocking the serotonin transporters. So there's still a good healthy amount of serotonin on the left-hand side, but there's less serotonin 1a auto regulators to be had because the brain can't or and these nerves can't take it anymore they down regulate how many actual receptors are there on the right hand side we get a lot more serotonin there's a lot more serotonin being propagated uh, uh, from that nerve because it's more ramped up it's more uh, activated there is still the SSRI medication working on the serotonin transporter at the axonal end, but it's not the primary effector. If it was just working on the axonal end, the idea is you would take the medicine, it would block the transporter, there'd be more serotonin at that axonal end of the nerve, and done. You would feel the effects the day that you took it, but that clearly doesn't happen. So there's some other longer process going on. And that's why we think the primary effect of SSRIs and antidepressants will work at the somatic dendritic end. Uh, back to this image, two to four weeks of using your SSRI, using your antidepressant, uh, primarily working on the, uh, the, nucle the nuclei, the, the uh, nerve bodies in the brain stem and we get this propagation of serotonin which i put in here as the light blue balls getting pushed out where they need to be effective in other parts of the brain in the frontal cortex and the uh, visual cortex down into the cerebellum up in into our um, uh, hippocampus and our uh, memory pathways uh, all of those places then the question is, why do side effects happen right away? Well, that kind of jumps back to this um, chart. There's a lot of receptors. And just like when I tell patients with antibiotics, when you take an antibiotic, it doesn't just go to where the infection is. It goes all over. It's working on lots of different bacteria. We're just trying to knock out the bad bacteria causing the problem. When you're taking an SSRI, it still goes all over. It's just going to primarily affect the areas where there's a bunch of... Um, a bunch of uh, serotonin transporters and where there's a heavy amount of serotonin nerves. That, ha that happens to be heavily in uh, the brain, 
but yeah, even look at like uh, 5 h uh, 5-HT2A. You can find those on platelets. That's why some people that take SSRIs have problems with side effects of bleeding. Why do they happen right away? Because you're taking the medicine, you are upregulating the amount of serotonin that are affecting these receptors. Bang, you get side effect. But the effect we're really looking for is for that nerve back in the brain to be effectively pumping out the adequate amount of serotonin to the rest of the pieces of the brain to help us feel um, the right amount of calm and uh, to feel good uh, for a lack of a better uh, lack of a better word. So show this um, slide quite a bit. We talk about time dependent side effects, particularly with SSRI and antidepressant medications quite a bit. Through the first two to three weeks there, you can see the side effects can be quite high. But then as weeks go on, those side effects wane away. As your body's getting used to all that noise, turning on and off signals the way, and again, this is the theory, turning off, off and on those signals and those receptors, your body starts to propagate the appropriate amount of serotonin that it needs to downstream to the rest of the brain. At the same time, it's going to regulate how it uh, perceives that serotonin to the rest of those uh, receptors in that same time period. Side effects die away. The effect of the SSRI, that the good side effect that we're looking to get, which is uh, a balancing of our of our depression and anxiety that goes up. That's the theory to kind of take it home in the most boiled down version that I can. The SSRIs primarily work at the cell body, the left hand side of the nerve in the picture, uh, in the slides from before, it's not really working on the axonal end, the loud noises from all that serotonin, serotonin, make the brain stop listening by down-regulating the receptors, particularly the serotonin 1A receptor, which is heavy in that um, raphe nucleus, gets down-regulated, which is an auto-regulator, which actually makes the nerve want to be less active. That gets down-regulated. So the result is more of a steady state of serotonin being pumped out from the axon elsewhere in the brain where you need it and you feel better. Real quick, uh, Par Rosenquist uh, asked about uh, echothesia. I'm still making that video. I'm still trying to find a good mechanism of action and a good uh, set of slides to put together but admittedly harder than I thought. So that video is going to come uh, for him in just another couple of days. Uh, I did not put any questions or comments into this uh, video because specifically um, it was a little more dense. Um, I, I just wanted to keep it just like this. Um, next week, uh, I'm going to talk more about um, the side effect, uh, the side effects of SSRIs and kind of the mechanism of the side effects and dive a little bit deeper into some of those um, serotonin receptors a little more specifically, 1A, 2B, um, all those. If you do have any questions specifically that you want to have me try to answer, uh, like Par's question, uh, leave them in the comments and I'm going to see if I can get to them. Um, if you have any questions about what I was saying in this video or want me to try to explain things better, maybe I didn't explain it all that well, or maybe there's a different, better way to try to explain it, um, put that in the comment section also, um, because that might help me learn how to explain it better. It might help other people uh, learn than uh, the way that I just tried to explain it. Uh, but thank you for watching. Um, tune in for next week, okay? Thank you.